it's IEEE spectrum. So they're talking about actually building flexible electronic circuit devices that would go on your skin, maybe add sensor capabilities, or to do medical diagnostics or thing like that. Now, the way this is done here, this probably wouldn't allow your skin to breathe very well. But maybe you could put like, uh, who did I talk with you? About uh, electronic tattoos, you know, on your skin, which basically would be the surface that you put on your skin. Maybe it's temporary. Maybe it's more permanent for medical or some other purposes. Um, you know, again, you know, I have all kinds of interesting applications people could do with this stuff. We are in an age where we can make flexible electronics. We are in an age where we can make flexible. You know, Moore's Law has, has everything on top of the development of local power. The trends for, for decades, actually for yeah, many decades now, has been roughly a doubling of battery power density, you know, energy density about every 10 years, right? And that's a lot slower than bandwidth, than processing power, and all kinds of things. So uh, this is just uh, a chart showing some, uh, some uh, battery roadmap technologies. I think this basically is for electric vehicles. But a lot of these things actually are very closely related to the batteries we use in our, in our mobile devices. So I think there's enormous possibilities there. And I said before, maybe what we need to be looking at is what we can do in terms of power generation devices. Let's see. Ah, and the reason why is because, whereas right now uh, we're doing important work, it's very important work in terms of trying to minimize power usage, create low power states, and you're not using a feature on, on your devices. Um, and also to reduce the heat load. I was actually talking to a guy from Paul Common. One of the things he was saying, uh, the more stuff you want to do, the hotter those processors can get to be. And actually getting the heat out of, the, out of a phone may be a big deal. But if you could generate more power and you can deal with that heat, maybe a heat pipes or things like that, you could do an awful lot of stuff. Right now we're putting more and more radios on these things. You could actually keep them on more you know, without them burning out your, ba your battery if we had more power, more juice available in these things. We could put micro projectors. There's actually micro projectors that exist today that could fit inside of a phone. We could do HD, de HD definition projections from a mobile phone with significant uh, availability of storage capacity for that stuff, but also uh, if we had the battery power to be able to do this. We could uh, build tricorders, you know, things like that, you know, to do these medical or other types of functions that we want to be able to build into mobile device we could have with us. More on that later. Uh, we could have more storage capacity of various sorts available to us more communications, faster cloud applications, and uh, enable, because of that greater connectivity, get more collaborative and interesting things you can do between these devices. Maybe new forms of social networking games and things of that sort. Our cars are becoming mobile application platforms. Everything's a computer nowadays. And cars are computers. In fact, uh, you know, I know that some of the German car companies have been some of the, some of the, the, the people leading these areas, as well as other companies. Uh, new vehicle features and development are planned or automated autonomous vehicles. You heard several mentions of uh, Google, the, you know, the autonomous vehicles of Google and other folks. Uh, automatic vehicle delivery, you can actually have vehicles on the road delivering stuff with nobody driving. Fleets of these things. Um, other things you can do is you basically make your car or whatever vehicle it is work the way you want it. You can change all, you can effectively, within the limitations of the equipment, be able to modify all these things that require it so you can you can change the feel of your car from when you drive to work and you're feeling rare and ready to go, and when you're going home you're saying, I just want to relax. You know, you could, uh, you could do all those things. You could uh, change the tire inflation, you could put route guidance, of course, uh, entertainment. There's like almost no limit of these things. You could have your car your way, just like Sinatra here. Uh, this is one we dealt a lot with. This actually I just uh, stole off of, uh, robot Frank, but uh, stole off of the uh, IEEE Life Science Initiative. So this is, there's, IEEE actually has this life science initiative. It's one of the big initiatives that they've been doing. And, this, and we have a piece of that in terms of the, the consumer health, the mobile devices, the things we've been talking about the last, the last couple of days um, are a big part of that. But there's a, a bunch of different uh, functions here for health care services, uh, knowledge management, uh, decision making, that's things of that sort, information gathering, big data, big data activities, and then sensors and actuators where you might use that bionic skin or things like that to do interesting stuff. And of course, tricorders. Uh, if there's some, those of you who know, who know Star Trek or, or heard about this, uh, Qualcomm actually created a, a tricorder X prize at the CES show the, the year before this, 2012. Uh, so far, I haven't seen one yet. I suppose there's a lot of money tied up in this. Actually building portable medical devices that can be used for diagnostic purposes. That's what they're defining as a tricorder, so that would fit as a medical tricorder. And uh, so, uh, and in fact, uh, at uh, uh, 
let's see, uh, Klaus's talk yesterday, he actually gave some important functions of building some mobile devices to be able to do a lot of, the, well, potentially a lot of those kind of features. I think many of us are inspired by science fiction. Home fabrication, building additive manufacturing, be able to make things as you want it. Uh, the delivery is through the wire instead of through the mail. Okay, you don't go to the store, you can make it at home. Uh, we will probably have things that could print stuff that will be fairly inexpensive and reasonably widespread with limited materials probably by 2020 for, for most people. You can have a printer, a thing printer in your home. Um, they're available now with prices from you know, a couple hundred bucks to a few thousand dollars. Uh, MakerBot, for instance, is one example, but there's a, I forget the name, there's a company downstairs the, the, that we visited today uh, going to the uh, tech, tech watch tour that, uh, that had a 3D manufacturer, 3D printer. There's a whole bunch of them out there. There's even been some mergers and acquisitions that's already gone in this area. Um, design and share through the web. We actually have databases of things. You know, not only an internet of things, but a, but a database of things. You can have things that can scan physical devices and make and print them, make another copy of them. Uh, you can go into production if you have a design, an idea. You go, you get guys like say in China, at Alibaba, or a place like that, and actually start manufacturing your thing. Um, and there are companies available to something pre your design with even more complicated materials that are available today with the more expensive um, uh, 3D or added to manufacturing 3D printing devices that are available. You can make it out of ceramics, metals, things of that sort, but actually print it rather than the traditional machine tool. It's a whole different age in terms of how we can make stuff. And then the smart grid in the home. We had, I think there was at least, well, there's one keynote talk focused on that, I believe. This was IEEE's view, IEEE standards view of what that meant. That there's all manner of uh, different standards, a lot of them associated with uh, that the IEEE has been involved with the power generation, um, the way that might be able to use it in the home, and all the networking standards, uh, electric vehicle standards, things of that sort. In the consumer space, we have a whole different perspective on this, that we control part of that, uh, that demand in, and the control and use of that and the very interesting things that we could be doing in that space, especially if we get into more alternative energy sources. And then I'm a storage guy, so I just thought I'd say what, this, what I think this means in storage. Uh, I think we'll be seeing before too long a terabyte in your pocket, petabytes in your homes, potentially exabytes in data centers, and zettabytes in the world. And that may sound ridiculous, except I saw a one terabyte USB stick at the CES show this year. It was kind of expensive, but still, you know, it's kind of interesting. So you could carry a terabyte in your pocket. So what does this mean for us at the Consumer Electronics Society? You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. And that's and it's in the space that the IEEE is, is involved with IEEE, the VDE, or any engineering organization that's worth its salt should be interested in consumer electronics. And they all have a role in consumer electronics. This stuff will be shaping the future that will affect us, our children, and the society for uh, decades to come. So we, uh, we've created IEEE Future Directions Committees, which are various groups, and I'll give you the list in just a minute here, uh, that are working on a lot of different functions. There's certainly not everything we could be working on, but um, they're an extension of a bigger activity going on with, with some broad initiatives in the IEEE as a whole, the international IEEE, maybe interplanetary before too long, um, uh, which uh, has a Future Directions Committee. Uh, our various group's purpose is to explore the current state of various technology areas in consumer electronics and develop a model and plan for future developments with a focus on meeting its important social and human needs as well as enable the individual pursuit of happiness. And uh, the big IEEE uh, cons uh, Future Directors Committee objective, well, no, this is us again, turning science fiction into reality. Now, that may be a horror story or it may be a utopia, right? But that's kind of what we're about. You know, we're doing, we're making this stuff. We're all these, all these technology things are going into making what is going to become the future. We want to be able to uh, incubate emerging technologies, new applications of uh, current technologies, see where things are going to go in the future, identify opportunities to engage the engineering community and the general public, get more into what we're thinking of there. Uh, work with IEEE members and staff. That's IEEE in New Jersey and elsewhere to focus on emerging technologies through technical, professional, and educational activities. We want to serve as a catalyst for new conferences, for keynote speakers, uh, uh, conference sessions, publications, standards, educational products, forums, white papers, money, grants, and projects to support new technology areas. Why don't we have it? For instance, one thing I think is really would be worthwhile, why don't we have an X Prize for mobile power, right? Because if we had uh, new mobile power stores, we could do stuff like that. There's things like that I think we might be able to do. 
Here's our current Consumer Electronics Society Future Direction Committees. And again, there's a lot more stuff that could be. We just don't have people who want to do them yet, or enough people. Uh, advanced audio, clouds, consumer big data, uh, consumer digital storage, uh, robotics, uh, consumer smart grid, future education, home fabrication, home health, internet of things, mobile energy, product safety, smart imaging and biometrics, smart vehicular technology, sustainability, and consumer electronics. And we actually have uh, folks who are involved in various other IEEE societies besides the Consumer Electronics Society, like Computer Society people we have, like Merlin and the folks from the Product Safety Committee. We've also got a Vehicular Technology Society. I see no reason why we couldn't do stuff with the BDE, for example. You know, some joint stuff and, and get some more committees going on some of these other activities. And what we want to do with these committees? Well, we wanted to address near and long-term future direction trends and also create initiatives that would serve the society. And some of these initiatives are thinking are helping to put together sessions and keynote speakers uh, for IEEE Consumer Electronic Conferences, helping to recruit articles for our magazine, which, by the way, I think a whole bunch of really neat medical articles we could get out of this conference if people are interested in turning their PowerPoints into an article. By the way, this, art, this uh, magazine, uh, one of the articles won a, 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 what they call an Apex Award, so it's like a jur important journalism award this, uh, just recently. Um, we're conducting, in the course of conducting a young consumer survey and uses of consumer devices, I'll just show you briefly some, some uh, slides and some of the results from that. It's still ongoing and available. Uh, high school, college people, maybe even uh, oh, uh, you know, graduates as well as undergrad, you guys can take it. Uh, participation in putting together uh, chapters in a book proposal, which uh, we're calling Future Directions in Consumer Electronics. That's something I'd like to get going. And I'll create other new, new initiatives uh, to make larger activities in the F Future Directions Committee of the IEEE technical activities board. In other words, we may be able to bring things into IEEE which they can put serious money into to develop it. So here's that some stuff from the young user survey. So it's still open. We've got this uh, survey monkey survey. Still still open that. So I'm glad to share the share the, the, the login for that. We're trying to get uh, college students and uh, high school students. We actually have people already who've taken it from all over the world, from Hong Kong, Singapore, San Jose. Um, and uh, so we got it started, published the results, we're thinking if we get enough folks at 2014 ICCE conference. Here was just uh, the devices that people said they owned, uh, they owned or used, a bunch of different things here, and I'll be glad to make that available. Um, here is what, what's your favorite consumer uh, electronic device, and I don't expect you to read that, but these folks said laptops and smartphones and cell phones. And uh, how many hours per day do you spend with your digital devices, and the majority spent somewhere between two to eight hours, they said. These are just some results, initial results. These could change as we get more, more stuff there. And then, since I'm a storage guy, I asked, uh, do you or your family back up your digital content? And about 25% of the people said that they did not. So that's asking for trouble in my mind. But anyway, that was an interesting result. And actually, it's not dissimilar to what you find in other surveys that I've seen like this. So finally, just to end this thing, and let, let us all get off and get something to eat, I want to make a call to action. Encourage you to join our future directions activities, whether you're an IEEE person or not. We've got all kinds of neat things we could be doing here. We'd love to have an IEEE person, but we'd love to work on some of these projects. You can join a current committee, create a new committee, and to recruit folks to participate in our committees. Um, there's a lot of trends we're not yet involved in. We could be. And I was just trying to raise some ideas what those might be and the stuff I was saying earlier. So if you have an interest, get a hold of me. I'm Tom Coughlin at Tom Coughlin, Tom at TomCoughlin.com. Let me know if you'd like to participate. So with that, the future is waiting for us. So let's go make it happen. Thank you.